Greetings, people of Earth. This is a history lecture. I'm going to talk about how the UX community was made in Michigan, and how Michigan people made the UX community. So, why are we talking about history? Well, UX isn't a job, it's a profession, and professions have history. And if we're going to figure out where we're going, we have to know where we've been. So, where have we been? Well, the history of UX actually stretches back centuries, but more recently, I want to talk about human factors and ergonomics. So, for decades, to this day, there are human factors people here in Michigan doing research at the university up at uh, Umtree, um, people working in the automotive industry. Um, now, I want you to hold on to that thought, the human factors thought, because we're going to skip over to computer science briefly. Now, 1970s, the price of computers is plummeting, and all of a sudden you started to have people that weren't computer scientists using computers for the first time. Uh-oh. And so now you have people that were you know, very concerned about uh, how to make design of software less bad. Um, and some of those people were in uh, ACM SIG SOC. Um, and this was a group started out to um, focus on uh, putting stats software in universities. Um, a couple of their leaders, Marilyn Manti and Greg Marks, were faculty here at Michigan. And those two decided to put on a conference. In 1981, they organized the first HCI conference in North America, here in Ann Arbor. It had a very long name. And this is the first time you really had a community here coming together to talk about human-computer interaction. And everyone walked away from that talk very excited. So now we skip to the next step. The next year, another conference over in Maryland. Now you had the human factors community in Maryland. They decided to put together their, their, their own small conference. They planned for 200 people. All these HCI people heard about it, and hundreds and hundreds of people showed up at this conference. And now I want to tell you about a particular scene, this room. Uh, there was a hotel room where people met to discuss, to discuss the future of human-computer interaction, and the room was packed. People were sitting on the bed, sitting on the floor, talking about HCI, and that was the room where it happened, the room where they, they came up with the name ACM Sig Chi, and that was the place where UX became a topic in ACM instead of a topic in the human factors world. Now, in the 19, early 1980s, there weren't a lot of practitioners. It was mostly academic, but you did have outliers like Stephanie Rosenbaum. Here in Ann Arbor, she just picked up and learned about HCI and turned her agency, TechEd, into a UX agency. But, you know, there, the number of practitioners multiplied by the end of the 80s. They started to see that they needed their own community outside of CHI. And that was how the Usability Professionals Association got started. And that Stephanie Rosenbaum was one of the charter members of that organization. Now, skip ahead to the 90s. Computers are everywhere. The internet is everywhere. University of Michigan decides to change its focus from library studies to incorporate UX. And then the internet changed. Mosaic, the first modern web browser, came out and it could display text and pictures together. And all of a sudden, people needed websites, so they needed web designers. So there were web design firms. And here in Ann Arbor, it's firms like Argus, Diamond Bullet, Q. The first e-commerce engine was built here by a company called Branch. You had a wave of people interested in UX, just you know, multiplying. Now, that company, Argus, that was where uh, Peter Morville and Lou Rosenfeld, two U of M alumni, put those library science ideas to work, and they wrote the book Information Architecture for the World Wide Web, um, a seminal work in the IA field. So by the end of the 90s, there were, the number of uh, practitioners was multiplying in Michigan. Uh, U of M had a uh, very active Chi chapter, but you had enough people that, again, that same pattern, Practitioners formed their own Michigan chapter of the UPA. And this story has played out in the years since then. Organizations coming and going. And there's a ton more of us now. And we have brand new ways to communicate. But still that drive to form communities. And so, in conclusion, three things. First, learn about our history, both local and global. Two, our history is made of people, 
forming communities. And three, of course, Michigan is very important to the history of UX. And that's how UX was made.